Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. Thanks a lot for joining. Today we are gonna round out the M3 money supply for the United States, continuing on with the last most mysterious component, the Euro dollar. All right. So we have our tomato curve here. This is the Federal Reserve's M3 published money supply all the way until February 2006 when it was discontinued at about 3.5, 3.56 trillion dollars. And this is non-M2 M3 money. Quick reminder, as always, Definitely check out prior videos if you want to see more. We've gone through all the M's in this series thus far. M0, that's base money, that's physical cash and coin that is located outside of bank vaults. M1 is M0 plus demand deposits or site deposits or the checking account. M2 is M1 plus less regulated retail type monetary instruments and m3 is m2 plus less regulated institutional type monetary instruments and we talked a lot in the last video about the repo market uh, definitely do check that out if you haven't seen that one before watching this video i think it will help but the fact that the federal reserve stopped publishing this in 2006 I think comes down to two factors. The first is they had lost control of the repo market. The second is they had lost control of the Euro dollar market. So that's what we're gonna cover today. Now, unlike in our last video where the Federal Reserve eventually later in 2012 or so started to publish more better data about the repo market. Uh, so we were able to create kind of a backwards compatible curve of repos. They have never done so with Euro dollars. And to this day, to my knowledge, I have never seen a fully all encompassing Euro dollar money supply curve. So that's the challenge that we're gonna deal with here when we wanna talk about the Euro dollar market. Really quickly though, before we get into it, I think it's probably good to uh, define some terms. So here's a paper from May 1981 from the Federal Reserve Bank of Richmond. Uh, it's by Marvin Goodfriend. He was a very well-known economist that studied the Eurodollar market a lot. And here's how he defines Eurodollars. Eurodollars are deposit liabilities denominated in United States dollars of banks located outside the United States. Easy enough. Basically, every bank account, every account, anything that's outside of the jurisdiction of the Federal Reserve, i.e. outside of United States banks, i.e. in foreign banks, if it's dollar denominated, then we can classify that as a Euro dollar. And just a quick bit of history here, why the Euro dollar? Well, that's because the genesis, the origin of this market for sure was in Europe. Post-World War II, we had the dawn of the Bretton Woods era where the dollar was tied to gold, but of course everyone else, uh, and when I say everyone else, I mean every other central bank around the world was gonna settle in dollars. Of course they could own gold with a claim on gold, most of the gold being held in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, um, and a lot of gold flowed into the United States, uh, as I've talked about before, during World War II as a consequence of the ravaging tyrannical policies of Hitler and Stalin. Um, but after World War II, when Western Europe in particular was being rebuilt with the Marshall Plan and the help and aid of the United States, you saw an influx of dollars, of dollar-based investment that was coming into Europe. Uh, primarily, this was done via UK banks, but of course it was done in France, it was done in Spain, it was done in many places, West Germany. Uh, basically, as the United States started to export uh, their dollars into Europe, you started to have on the flip side, a demand from companies, banks, individuals to hold dollar-based assets. But coming back to this definition now from good friend, Euro dollars are deposit liabilities denominated in United States dollars of banks located outside the United States. 
Notice it doesn't say Europe anywhere. So that's just the traditional name. Euro dollars now, for sure. Uh, and even during this time in 1981, it's just the name, the nomenclature, the convention for dollar denominated deposits outside the United States, but it is not limited to Europe. It's just the name that's stuck, uh, but Euro dollars can exist in South America, in Africa, and Asia as well. Now, there's a footnote to this paper, which I think is very important to point out. Uh, it's talking about how you would measure the Euro dollar market and this is something that is overlooked by people that might quote how the Federal Reserve looked at Euro dollars, which we're going to look at in a moment, uh, pre-2006 when they stopped publishing M3. And again, Euro dollars were a part of M3, of course. That's why we're talking about it. Uh, this is a very important footnote. And to my knowledge, this had never changed from then until the Federal Reserve stopped publishing in 2006. And that is, quote, at present, euro dollars held by non-U.S. residents are not included in any of the U.S. monetary aggregates. As improved data sources become available, the possible inclusion of euro dollars held by non-U.S. residents other than banks and official institutions could be reviewed. This is a very important point because it's basically saying that the Federal Reserve, whether it be for lack of resources or just the best way that they thought that they could count it all up, they are only counting US-based companies and individuals that are located abroad. That's all they're counting up. So when the Federal Reserve has published Euro dollars as a component of the M3 money supply, they are only counting, say, if General Electric had a bank account in Europe, because General Electric, of course, is doing business in Europe, or Procter & Gamble doing business in Europe. These are US-based companies, US resident companies, but they have offices, they have a presence abroad. The Federal Reserve, the institution trying to get a hold of the Euro dollar supply, is only counting their USD denominated deposits. It's only counting up deposits for US based companies or US based banks abroad or US individuals abroad. It's pretty unfortunate. And I think it's a fact that's quite overlooked by all economists studying this stuff is Euro dollars have never actually been counted up the way they are defined. Again, the way that Euro dollars are defined they are deposit liabilities denominated in U.S. dollars of banks located outside the United States. Notice they say nothing, as far as the definition goes, of it's just limited to U.S.-based companies with a presence abroad or with bank accounts abroad. Yet that's what they're counting up. So that's the rub. That's the issue. That is our challenge as far as understanding where the euro dollar market has been and extrapolating where the euro dollar market could go. So having said all that, let's go back to the chart here and let's look at what the Fed actually has published as far as total euro dollar market data uh, up until the point when they stopped publishing in February 2006. Are you ready? Here are the euro dollars. Much ado about nothing. Okay? I apologize for the zoom uh, button being set here, but I can still show you. So this is denominated by this little whale in gray euro dollars. You see that it's a very small, small component of the M3 money supply that was calculated by the Federal Reserve up until February 2006. Um, whereas once we got to February 2006, it was uh, $3.5 trillion M3 money that is not M2. As you remember, it's cumulative. So three and a half trillion dollars of M3 money alone and Euro dollars only made up $430 billion worth. So a little bit over 10%, but not that much at all. So the question is, can we extrapolate or find a proxy for something that represents the Euro dollar? I will submit to you that certainly we can, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. It's just too early. Uh, 
this is going to be my first video on the issuance of euro dollars. It's certainly not going to be my last. There are many, many estimates. It's very, very difficult. Uh, and I think that it's just too much for this first video. For example, here's an estimate from JP Morgan in 1985. You see here, they estimated the euro dollar market at $1.7 trillion. Yet the Federal Reserve said the euro dollar market was $104 billion. How can that be? Again, the main, main point there is that JP Morgan is presumably counting up a gross number of most of the banks that it has relationships with in dollars. Whereas the Federal Reserve is only counting up United States entities that have an, a presence, that have accounts outside of the United States that they have asked and surveyed and understood that that is their dollar account balance. So a huge discrepancy already in 1985. And it gets crazier from there. So let's reset the zoom. And I'm going to show you a rough proxy of how I extrapolated the euro dollar market out uh, until today. Again, much ado about nothing. And this is not at all encompassing the euro dollar market. But nonetheless, I am going to leave it because we're going to make some analyses as we move forward of the M3 money supply in total. And I'm just always going to have the caveat that for sure, euro dollars are understated by a lot, uh, but repos probably are as well, because repos are a very international type of instrument these days, uh, swaps and cross collateralizing with not only central banks, but main large banks around the world, uh, engaging in these types of swaps and instruments, repos and euro dollars are a part of that, but it's just not counted up in a proper, a proper way. So how did I get this extrapolation after 2006? I very simply took the growth of the remaining M3 components uh, and applied that to this $430 billion uh, balance of euro dollars in February 2006. So if you add on large time deposits, you add on institutional money market funds, you add on repos, and remember repos are what really blew it out for the Federal Reserve showing that they'd lost control. See that their repo estimate is somewhere under that red line, right? Including euro dollars as well under that red line. But if you do the better data that they've calculated from 2012, it just blows it out. So now you take uh, a weighted average of basically repo growth, institutional money market fund growth, and large time deposit growth. I've applied those growth rates to the euro dollar to at least get something, but of course it's not it's not correct at all. And let's let's analyze that a little bit more here. So let's take them off. This is just euro dollars. Uh, I have them in the timeline. Okay, we have the global financial crisis, and I'm sure that it is correct that euro dollars expanded before the global financial crisis and then contracted after, as it did all money supplies. But at what value? Well, here's the BIS. They have an estimate of $2.6 trillion of euro dollars in 2010. What do I have here? A measly $526 billion. So the data is, is way wrong, obviously. Let's zoom in here now, going forward till today. We have a bunch of highly, highly scrutinized uh, leaks that have come out in the uh, mid 2010s and even up until very recently, uh, where we have seen there are a lot of politicians, a lot of companies that are basically hiding money in tax free offshore accounts, primarily in the Caribbean, but many other places. Let's look at them. The Panama Papers. It was estimated at the top end, top end, okay, there were 22.9 trillion dollars of value in the Panama Papers. Now that's the top end number. Of course, I would hasten to say as well, are they all in Euro dollars, simply dollar denominated accounts in Caribbean banks? Of course not. I'm sure there are repos in there. I'm sure there are stock balances. I'm sure there are bond balances. I'm sure there are many, many instruments that are not just straight up a dollar based deposit. Nonetheless, a large chunk are going to be. Is it 20 trillion? Is it 10 trillion? Is it 15 trillion? I don't know, but certainly uh, if you're holding wealth in banks abroad, it might not even have to be a checking account. It'd be a savings account, a time deposit account, a money market fund abroad, so on and so forth. And it's probably going to be dollar based. It's probably going to be dollar based. So it's a huge, huge portion of uh, euro dollars, no doubt, were part of the Panama Papers. Then we have this South African bank, uh, Nedbank. They made a uh, report which uh, I just pointed out because it's notable in 2016 here, September 2016, they estimate the euro dollar market at $13.4 trillion. All right, then we have the Paradise Papers. 
That was $9.1 trillion. Same thing with Panama. Do we know that every single offshore account for politicians and their corrupt cronies that had uh, offshore money that wasn't being taxed, so on and so forth, do we know that every single dollar there was in the form of a euro dollar? No. But I can guarantee you that a significant portion was. Majority, maybe not, but certainly a very, very significant portion. Certainly not what I'm showing you of this little, what should be a whale of the euro dollar money supply. It's really a minnow of about $599 billion extrapolated from the Federal Reserve's balance of $430 billion in February 2006. Okay, so it's certainly much, much more than $600 billion of USD denominated deposits located abroad, simply by these just these little data points that we can see of other people doing research. And then, of course, we have the Pandora Papers. Now, this is a massive number, big headline number, $32 trillion from October 2021. At this time, I'm only estimated based on just the standard M3 growth of the euro dollar from 2006 that we would be at about $797 billion in the euro dollar market. Yet the Pandora Papers are showing that there's $32 trillion of wealth existing offshore in, uh, I think it was a huge spreadsheet actually in some emails that were, uh, that were counting up all of this different data uh, with that release. So trillions and trillions of dollars you can see from these few data points. Uh, whereas if I just took a very simple, rough weighted average growth of the remaining M3 money supplies, which are definitely better, definitely better, uh, it gives us a much lower number to where I believe Euro dollars should be the whale portion of this money supply. It comes out looking like a minnow because you're at $780 billion by December 22, just by increasing the growth rate as large time deposits, institutional money funds, and um, repos. Just by taking a weighted average of each of those components as growth rates, you get a very, very modest growth of euro dollars uh, during this period. And I think clearly an incorrect growth based on JP Morgan's estimate of 1.7 trillion in the 80s, uh, the BIS of 2.6 trillion at the start of uh, the 2010s, and Ned Bank and these different Panama Paradise Pandora paper releases. I mean, trillions and trillions of dollars that clearly exist of dollar denominated counts offshore. First of all, this was never calculated correctly by the Federal Reserve and good friend admitted as much. This was only this gray shaded area was only looking at American, American type bank accounts, companies, private individuals that were located abroad. So the best that they could count it up, that was what a euro dollar was. They weren't looking at every single company. They weren't looking at every single bank. And indeed, it's hard to calculate that data. It's hard to calculate that data. So you see that this is really the X factor as far as the liquidity of the United States dollar. A lot of people talk about this. There's a popular podcast, which I recommend, uh, Euro Dollar University. Uh, Jeff Snyder has talked about the euro dollar for a long time as being an important component of the global financial system. And, uh, and I certainly agree. I think it is important, but I think we don't have a handle on how big the euro dollar market truly is. Nonetheless, I'm going to stick with this for now just to show how absurdly small uh, it is based on the Federal Reserve's prior calculation and how they probably, just like repos, how they lost control of the repo market, they no doubt lost control of the euro dollar market, understood as much. Because when you're at 430 billion here, and then the BIS is already estimating 2.6 trillion here in 2010, these numbers just don't match, right? The growth rate is huge. So what am I going to do about it? How am I going to try to bring some transparency here to you? Well, I'm going to try, and this is going to take a long, long time. I'm going to try to count up best I can uh, the foreign currency deposits in broader money supplies that other central banks publish. This is not always transparent, but typically, typically the data is there. And so I'm going to try to just slowly, slowly accumulate that data over the years, but I'm not even close to that. You know, definitely leave me a note in the comments if you know any other money supply that really accurately estimates the supply of euro dollars, um, even before 2006 and then after, because there's just huge discrepancies, as you see here. 1.7 trillion in 1985, Federal Reserve estimated 100 billion. 
it's just laughable to only count up uh, US type companies and individuals located abroad when you know that there are many, many, many other uh, international entities, agencies, companies, banks, so on and so forth that are dealing with dollar denominated deposits. So that is what the euro dollar means. It means dollars abroad. And one last example I want to show you here, going back to what I was just saying about counting up each individual central bank's broader money supply that has foreign currency in it. One central bank, which is fairly transparent about this is interestingly Argentina. Now, Argentina has gone through five, six, maybe more currency uh, devaluations in the last 50 years, and they're actually pretty transparent about that. So I want to show you this little uh, graphic here, not a chart, but just uh, just a list of how the foreign currency portion of Argentinian M3 deposits evolved over the years. So in December 1981, Federal Reserve was showing about 86 billion dollars in euro dollar deposits. Here's what Argentina had to say about that. Uh, at this time, December 1981, the Argentinian currency was the lei, and there was about one billion dollars of foreign currency deposits held by the public in Argentina. That was only 4.7 percent of their total. Uh, M3 money supply, including local and foreign currency. Okay, so it's not very much. And yes, they don't specifically say this is United States dollars, USD denominated deposits. But again, I'd be willing to bet my left kidney that the vast majority of that is dollar denominated deposits. Uh, you know, this is Argentina in the 80s. I'm pretty sure there's not a high demand for Russian rubles or many other currencies other than the dollar in Latin America at that time. So $1 billion in December 1981. As we go forward here, look at how the foreign currency deposits of Argentina evolve. December 1983, they're now on a new currency, the peso argentino, and they have $410 million worth of foreign currency, which actually is a drop in their total M3 deposit portion, only 3.9% of foreign plus local currency and M3. $410 million worth, quite a drop actually, uh, grossly and percentage wise, is in foreign currency in 1983. It grows back again in December 1985. Now we're on a new currency still, the Australis. I'm sorry, my Spanish friends, if I've butchered that, the Australe, Australis. <laughs> $718 million of foreign currency held in Argentina. Again, I'm sure the vast majority of that is in USD. And uh, that foreign currency portion of deposits make up 5.2% of all M3 deposits. So we're growing again. Now let's go all the way to when the Fed discontinued here, February 2006. Now they're on the, the modern currency, which they have today, the peso. We have $4.4 .4 billion of foreign currency in the Argentinian M3 money supply, $4.4 .4 billion in 2006. This is 7.5% of the total M3 local and foreign deposit money supply of Argentina. This is 7.5%, $4.4 billion. Let's go to today. Argentina has $19.5 billion of foreign currency deposits as part of its M3 money supply. And that has grown as well as a proportion of its total. That now represents 13% of Argentinian uh, deposits, both local and foreign currency denominated, still in the peso here, as of December 2022, $19.5 billion. We can simply see that based on the Argentinian data alone, the growth rate is very, very fast for the demand for international dollars. And it no doubt should be better reflected here in the euro dollar extrapolated supply that I am showing here. And so what it's going to take basically is someone going through all of the central bank balance sheets. And we're going to have to rely on what the central banks tell us, of course, which is not always accurate, certainly not as accurate as the Bitcoin blockchain as far as how much money exists there at any point in time. 
Uh, the only way to do it, as far as I can see, is going through every central bank balance sheet in the world, finding the total portion of foreign currency deposits owned by the public, owned by outside of the central bank type of, uh, of, a, of a fashion, of a manner, finding that total foreign currency. Hopefully we can see exactly the breakdown of dollars versus other currencies, but just assuming that the vast majority of this is going to be dollars anyway. Um, and putting all that together and actually creating a money supply that way. That's the only way that I can see that it would be done in a relatively accurate fashion. Um, unfortunately, that data doesn't exist anywhere at the moment. So I have this very, very crude, very, very simple extrapolation of the Fed's $430 billion here in February 2006. The trend is probably right, but uh, $780 billion dollars today. That's way, way low for the euro dollar. Nonetheless, I'm going to leave that for now. This is going to be our new M3 constructed money supply for now until we can get better data. Uh, by all means, leave me a note in the comments if you have seen anyone more accurately measure month by month or quarter by quarter or year by year uh, the euro dollar money supply that is all dollar denominated deposits outside of the United States. I would love to see it. I have one more point that I want to add. And that is the wonderful world of stablecoins. Uh, as I mentioned, euro dollars are dollar denominated deposits outside of the Federal Reserve's control. Is there any other easily accessible money supply that fits the bill there? Yes, there is a stablecoin, uh, specifically a USD denominated stablecoin. That is a euro dollar. That is a claim, a balance, something that trades like cash, in this case, a token that is issued by a company, the stablecoin uh, liquidity provider, uh, and then you give them cash, ACH or a SWIFT transfer, any sort of a transfer of a claim from one bank to them. They issue you the token, and then they back that token to keep it at the value of a dollar. They back that with hopefully, hopefully, uh, liquid government bonds or other liquid assets. As we know, there has been, uh, let's say doubtful backing of stable coins by, uh, by say corporate or commercial paper that might not necessarily be worth what they say it is but nonetheless uh that's a different story for a different day stable coins actually purely fit into the euro dollar context as far as defining uh, what type of money they are stable coins are euro dollars they are dollar based instruments not very regulated and outside of the jurisdiction of the federal reserve i'm going to draw now the four largest stable coins that is Tether, uh, USDC, uh, BUSD, and the DAI, uh, ALGO stablecoin right now. And here it is. <laughs> not much, not much, but this is a very transparent addition to the Euro dollar supply. And certainly I will continue to count this as we go on. Denoted by this little printer here, the stablecoin balance, let's even take off euro dollars, um, has exploded, as we've seen in the crypto market, with the advent of Tether and uh, USDC. And yes, I know that the Federal Reserve and the SEC, they're trying to get a bigger handle on this, and they're fining and always asking stablecoin issuers, you know, show us your book, so on and so forth. But it's not going to stop the issuance of stablecoin providers uh, outside of the United States. Uh, they will find a way, even if it's an algo stablecoin, Stablecoins are a very interesting invention. Um, I'm not, you know, it's not financial advice. I'm not saying you should put your money there, hold your money there, so on and so forth. But they are finding use. They are finding liquidity worldwide. And they purely, purely fit inside the definition of what a euro dollar is. So having said all of that, let's build back our non-M2, M3 money supply. We have stable coins, as I've just shown you, the euro dollars, which are poorly, poorly extrapolated here, but nonetheless, still going to leave it for now. Uh, massively, massively understated, no doubt. And I will continue to do my best to work on an independently calculated euro dollar supply uh, outside of this. Please let me know if you have any ideas. Then we have the repos, which I didn't say before. This is uh, non Federal Reserve repos talk more about that when we talk about base money and notes the revision there of repos takes us already to the value 
of the non-M2 M3 money supply in 2006 of three and a half trillion dollars. We have institutional money market funds, which by the way, institutional money market funds also work kind of like a stable coin. That's just the nature of how they work. You have a one share or one token that needs to be pegged to a dollar and you have assets that you purchase on the asset side of your balance sheet with that liquidity to keep one share or one token close to a dollar. Uh, nonetheless, definitely both, whether it's classified as a euro dollar or a money market fund, stable coins absolutely purely and cleanly fit into M3. And lastly, we have our large or institutional type time deposits. And you add all of these together, you get a little over $10 trillion in the United States reconstructed M3, non-M2 portion of the M3 money supply. Again, I hasten to say I'm very aware that Euro dollars here are well, well understated as probably are repurchase agreements. Uh, but until better data comes out, and I'm definitely gonna work on that myself, uh, this is what I'm gonna use when I talk about United States M3 until we get better data. But certainly that is the goal, to continue to publish as transparent a money supply as we can. So thank you for tuning into that. Please do tune into our next video when we will add this to M2 to get a total United States dollar public facing money supply. Take care.